Hello everyone, I hope that you are all doing well today and enjoying your weekend. It is Apex here with another trade review video going over Kirk, Futu, BLDP, FLGT, and BBY, doing a fundamental and technical overview as to why I took these trades. So let's get right into it, starting with Kirk. So I can, as you can see, I have some notes made that these will be included in the slideshow of this video. Chances are, if you are watching this video, you have already seen these slides anyways. But so the first technical perspective that I realized with Kirk was it had some fabulous bull volume. As you can see, awesome bull volume here. We have massive volume nodes throughout this entire market structure. Um, and that's like the first, the first indicator that I look for for confluence before entering a trade. I want to make sure that there's high bull volume involved in this ticker. That is first and foremost, because if there's high bull volume, there's an exceptional chance that there's institutional ownership, big player ownership, and that the price is likely to go higher. So then breaking down the actual price structure of the pattern here, we have this ascending triangle pattern. We can see that there's a flat top here uh, right around that 1330s level, which price action rejected from twice. And then we have higher lows leading up to the eventual breakout showing that bullish inclination is growing towards the apex of the pattern. The entry trigger that I was looking for was an hourly close above 1336 with high bull volume. So let's zoom into the hourly, hourly chart just to get a better view of this. So the reason why I chose that 1336 pivot was it was the last pivot in the price action. And I find that that is the most confluent area when price breaks above the last pivot in the price action consolidation. Um, that's where you see the biggest reactions. That's where you see the biggest volume come in, the biggest rejections or the biggest moves thereafter. So Kirk was no exception. Um, as you can see, right at the end of the day on November 20th, price started approaching that level. And as you can see here, as we broke out of that 1339 level, you can see the high of that candle, 1348, close above that pivot by three cents. Look at all this volume that comes into action here. We see some massive interaction with that area. So zooming back out on the time frame. And you can see the next day we had a small gap up open, but look at that volume that came through, eclipsing all of the already significant bull volume leading up to that breakout, which signifies a huge amount of interest in this in this uh, breakout here as shorts cover and bulls re-enter long, add to their positions and whatnot. You can also see that we had a beautiful retest of that, the that level the following day, which led to a nice bottom wick showing that buyer's interest was in full command. So that's what I look for with these entries. I wanna see that high bull volume candle close above these pivot levels, which I find, again, like I said, lead to some significant moves. We did have that sequence of consolidation. I love when, pr when price action does this, where you see a strong breakout, you have volume confluence, and then you get some several day period of consolidation just ranging above that level. What price was doing was it was waiting for an earnings release. And we had the benefit of having back-to-back -back earnings beats you can see the, the momentum from this earnings led to this pattern, led to the breakout, then price consolidated, waited for the uh, Q3 earnings release, which was a huge beat. And then you have this massive influx of volume that comes in as a result of that, and then continuation higher. So my target for this stock was I didn't really have any great Fibonacci levels to go off of. I could draw one, but I, I was a little bit you know hesitant about it. Um, so I just started targeting 25 psychological. I thought that was a good enough range. That's an exceptional move. Some 40%, I believe it was. Oh my God, I was way off. Some 85% um, increase of price action going up to that 25 level. So I thought, okay, that's more than adequate. And it's also the psychological level. So I was targeting just below 25, like 24, 30 or something like that, just kind of randomly below. Um, and we got exceptional follow through over the weeks to come. And so that is Kirkland's, the first breakdown. Next is Futu. So I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit to make it clear to see. Okay, so I know there's a lot going on right on this screen, but we'll try to, or I will try my best to break it down. So the first 
indicator that I look to again. What am I wanting? Volume. See, very high levels of bull volume accumulation on this ticker. That shows to me that there is a lot of institutional ownership involved, large player, you know the drill. We had a previous breakout where there was this little consolidative pattern here, price broke out and led to a strong increase in that bull volume through this impulse wave to the upside. So as price like pulled back, it began retesting this pocket of resistance, now turned support. So you can see there's clear interaction here, lots of lower wicks around that green zone. Um, and then the bull volume again is still very prominent. We're getting consistent bull volume beats. This one red volume beat you can see here had a big lower wick, a nice doji candle. So that does show buyer's interest overall from a, from a, a candlestick analysis. Now, as we start ranging, it becomes clear, okay, we are making some sort of bull flag. And now the next thing to do is take a Fibonacci level, uh, a Fibonacci retracement tool. So we use this pivot low here to the pivot high over here, and that derived our targets. Now you notice how the golden pocket is situated right around 37, and we have a beautiful candle confluence here with high bull volume. So a nice bullish candle, nice bull volume. That is like textbook technical analysis. That's what every trader wants to see who uses Fibonacci at least. As you can see here, lowest pivot of the bull flag bounces off the golden pocket with a bullish candle. Textbook analysis. Now, I was actually adding into this stock. I was so, um, typically I don't like to do this. I like to wait for the breakout, but I was actually adding a little bit of a position here. I got faked out earlier, I believe is what it was. And as price continued to pull back, I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to add to a losing position, but I was breaking this down. I made a tweet about it. And I thought, okay, the level of confluence behind this stock is absolutely exceptional. So now I was waiting for this pivot breakout of 45.15. So we zoom in on the hourly chart. And what do we see here? So we see that 930 candle, bulls in a nice hourly uptrend here. You see that 930 candle with an exceptional, exceptionally bullish close, um, closing at the high of the candle, awesome bull volume. We see a low volume pullback, as you can see here, low volume pullback, retest that level, gap up the next day, and then we never look back. So that was my hourly buy signal. I was like, okay, this is breaking out now. Now the party is set to begin. So using that Fibonacci tool, my target was the $60 psychological uh, level. In hindsight, these are the type of trades where you're just like, you're, you're face palming yourself. It's, it's tough to see a stock which you exit at $60 continue all the way up to 130. Um, but that's part of the game. It's You have no idea that these moves are gonna transpire. It did have a very high short float and kind of got lucky as the entire market began seeing these massive short float squeezes. Um, but you know, overall, I was happy to target that $60 level, you, sticking to my plan, sticking to my trade plan, using my Fibonacci tools, which is so, so reliable to me, and I got an exceptional move out of it. So that is FUTU. BLDP, Ballard Power Systems, is the next uh, stock you're watching. So I have a fundamental reason as to why, as to why I entered this position. So they are this company is a fuel cell um, corporation that creates renewable energy, clean energy, I should say. So clean renewable energy is the future with a Biden presidency, Democrat-controlled Senate. We are going to see that integration of clean energy time and time again. This sector is new, it's exciting, and it is the future. So any company that sets up in such a way as BLDP did here, you have to consider that fundamental element that there is no way unless there is a massive, uh, a massive flawed, fraud related instance with the actual company itself, there's no way that the price is going to go down, right? When you're talking about clean, renewable energy and good companies, it, you have to take that bullish outlook um, on things. So that's what I did here. So I noted that we had price action forming into a triangle consolidation, multiple points of confluence on both the lower and the upper trend line here, um, which shows me that the uh, pattern is entirely valid. We see high levels of bull volume throughout this entire consolidation phase, never really getting a bull or a bear volume beat. Now we did have an earnings miss, but that was taken or that was released at the lower part of this pattern here. And I guess price 
developed a little bit further. Investors didn't mind what they heard from earnings because we got a sound breakout. So looking for an entry trigger um, with an hourly close above 1921. So zooming into the hourly chart. Okay, so we see price action breaking above this level and we see increasing bull volume. We have a gap up open the next day. So we closed above that pivot level on November 20th but on low volume. However, overnight volume came in, we saw an awesome gap up above that level. That to me signifies a buy entry trigger. So we had that high bull volume spike, and then we see that gap up open. So buying into this. Now I noted that we had this daily consolidation above here, which I absolutely love. You can look at a strong impulse wave and then it appears to make a bull flag always interacting and bouncing above that 1921 pivot, which is why you can see how that last pivot in the consolidation is so important for traders. Um, and especially, you know, the algorithms and whatnot. So we have this multi-week period of consolidation into that bull flag after a strong impulse wave, nice bull volume coming in throughout this price action. And we get this massive node on November 24th. Now it does form a little bit of a doji, but that being said, anything with a lower wick, I have to perceive as bullish, especially as it was already breaking out, retesting that, um, that 1921 pivot level, which I thought was exceptionally coincidental. And then we see continuation out of that breakout, little consolidation more, and then price just begins to rip. So as we broke out of this consolidative pattern, bull volume really starts to come into the picture. And then that's why we have such an explosive move to the upside. Now, my original target was a $30 psychological level, just above the lower section pivot, or sorry, lower, lower section fib, but right below the 618 extension. We actually had a gap up open above that, so I sold right away. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it. Like such a strong move, great bull volume accumulation, and exiting right at that $30 level. The next ticker, FLGT, so fluid genetics, flu, flugent genetics. I've been saying that wrong my entire life. <laughs> um, okay, so the fundamental reason for entry here was that genetics testing it continues to be an exciting sector for investors. I mean, think about this, this is the future. This is how we are going to you know, solve ailments that have plagued humanity for its entire existence, cancers, uh, nervous system issues, right? This is the type of company that is really exciting to investors as technology continues to develop at such a rapid pace. Now we are beginning to see the benefit of, well, I guess we've always seen the benefit, but now we are really starting to see this as a realistic opportunity in the future where we have this genetic testing available to us. It's going to solve incurable diseases. It's going to give us a better perspective on our overall health. So very exciting um, industry for investors. I know CRISPR has been exploding a lot of talk about that stock. And so this is kind of just like a um, one of the stocks in the sector, like, a, you know, the saying uh, rising tide raises all boats, I believe is what it is. So similar idea, CRISPR is showing so much excited. So now we have the genetics industry just overall showing a lot of excitement for investors. Now price began making a ascending triangle. So we see this flat top resistance here with higher lows coming up into the apex of the pattern. So showing a lot of buying interest as we, as we, uh, as we come closer to the apex, bull volume, nodes of course we see incredible bull volume and then note this we see this very low volume and then we have uh, an earnings report so we have an earnings beat so that was another bull sentiment for this ticker and then as soon as we see that we have high 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 levels of volume coming into the stock now the fact that we do see some bear volume beats however we have this continuous higher low sentiment showing that bullish interest that to me is signifying okay this stock is getting bought up in a bull trend and high volume behind it we are likely going to see an explosive move to the upside so my trigger was a hourly close with high bull volume above 54.14. Zooming in on the hourly chart, we see again this candle here on December 30th, 
closes above that pivot level on high bull volume. That is my buy entry. Now I'm interested. Price pulls back below that level on declining volume. Next day, gap up open, bulls buy the dip, and we see exceptional strength to the upside. We have this brief consolidative phase where we have the strong bull impulse wave with exceptional volume coming through. That is world-class volume that is entering this stock. We see a one pullback, a strong impulse wave up, another pullback, and then an explosion to the upside. So bulls never lost the daily uptrend, which is another reason why I stuck it out. We do see some high bear volume coming through, but bulls buy that dip because there's so much interest in this sector. So the original target was this 618, $80 psychological level. Again, I undershot it a little bit, but that is fine. I'm sticking to my plan. I'm sticking to what's comfortable. I'm scaling enough into these positions where that move alone is more than enough. Keeping my money dynamic, fluid, so I can enter into positions. At this point in time, there were so many setups out there that I was just kind of, maybe a bit overwhelmed, which is why I kept moving my money around so much, but nonetheless, happy I took it here, stuck to my target of the Fibonacci extension, but overall an exceptional breakdown of this stock and a wonderful trade. The last ticker going over today, BBBY, a nice friend to the short squeeze community. So we have a, not a fundamental reason, but we have a high short float. Now I kind of got lucky with this trade just because of the um, because of the sentiment that happened in early 2021, where we see these massive squeezes from stocks like uh, GME, AMC, BB, NOK, where the Reddit community, the Reddit warriors, the Reddit army is coming in, buying up these stocks, squeezing the hell out of hedge funds. So nonetheless, it was very uh, lucky timing, but it was uh, definitely planned. Like I, I saw that high short float and I thought, okay, well, this has a potential to squeeze very, very much. I believe it was, it was either 30 or 60% short float. I think it was closer to 60% short float. I guess I could look it up here. Although it has changed since I took the trade, I do believe it was... Uh, about 60%, right, yeah, okay, 65.72% short float. This thing is a rocket ship. It is a shaking Coke bottle with Mentos in it, <laughs> ready to go to the upside. Anyway, so going over the technical perspective here, we have this very high bull volume note after an earnings beat in October. So an exceptional earnings beat, power earnings gap. If anyone follows Trader Stewie, they know this type of setup very well. We see some continuation and then we go through this long phase of consolidation here. I actually had entered a little bit earlier and was holding this position for months. But um, nonetheless, I was sticking it out. I saw these two gap levels that would likely act as support. I also noted this Fibonacci extension from this pivot down here to the pivot up here. Mark that out so you can see it better. And this pivot here to this pivot here, the Fibonacci tool was signified a golden pocket bounce. So the price was holding that golden pocket, which I'd love to see. We also have this gap here, which I noted was going to act as a bit of a launch pad. So I didn't see too many issues with with holding through this pattern much, I guess is the right words is to say. Anyway, so we were looking at this pivot here and this pivot here for the two that bulls wanted to break for the hourly chart. So I know that there was two entry triggers, 2157 and 2044. So zooming in on the hourly chart. So the original breakout was on January 6th. Now I was holding this position through earnings, but a one third size. So even though we broke above this pivot, I hope some of you know by now, I never want to hold a position through earnings because you might be stuck with these massive surprises. So if I had entered here at this close of the hourly candle, all the way up at 2132, I would have been shocked the day before when we see this massive gap down of 15 and a half percent as a result of a poor earnings surprise. However, I did not enter, thankfully, and we see this consolidation phase continue and then a strong breakout on the 11th. We see 
that influx of volume as price begins interacting with the 2044 level. And then eventually we have the 930 candle open of January 12th, break above, close above after making an hourly bull flag here. So that could have been trigger number one. And then we see price just explode from there through this second pivot of 2157. Massive bull volume as we squeeze out of that. As you can see, this ramp up bull volume, bulls is getting very interested at these levels. And then we don't really turn back afterwards. So that was my trigger. And then the rest is history. The target was $30. I did not expect it to move so much. Um, but we just had this explosive move through as the shorts were squeezed exceptionally well. But that trigger of about $30 lined up right with the lower targets here. I guess maybe I had been holding this position so much, so I was just kind of looking to get a quick profit and get out. But nonetheless, a great move overall. So I hope you all enjoyed today's video and learned something from it. Have yourselves a great rest of your weekend, and I will talk to you tomorrow.